Rodos and welcome to Rodos first Spanish edition of Where's the Best Videos, also known as Ranking Ones. Spanish edition only referring to my time here in Spain and since I'm roughly doing these videos once a month, now it's the first time for that and we'll dive deep into Swedish territory, this time with Thai Primordial. This is actually one of the very few uh, recommendations by the fans or followers, whatever you want to call yourself, when I was asking for your recommendations, which bands to feature here on Rauda. And usually, as the, the rules, rules go by, is that the band has to be disbanded in order to make it to these kind of ranking videos, or at least 30 years old, and no albums within five years. Thai Primordial definitely fits the first bill, I mean, it's been disbanded for quite some time now, but it's also an interesting band for me personally, because even though I got to listen black metal around mid-90s, roughly 1994 or so, this is a band that always just totally gone under my radar, that is, I never got to listen to Thai Primordial back in the days, so it's it was more like a virgin trip for me to check out this band properly. And uh, through a couple of months, maybe more than two actually, I gave these albums quite a few listens. I think on average like four or five listens even. That is, I keep my minimum at least to three always in order to figure out what, what's the ranking in my opinion and how to describe them to begin with. But this was a little bit more problematic, not only because me here moving to Spain, but also because I had a hard time to figure out what would be my ranking order. Uh, there are bands which are very, very easy for me to rank, especially the kind of favorites of mine, Bathory Slayer, Dark Throne and the like. There are clearly different eras, different phases, applying to bands such as Celtic Frost as well. But Thai Pro Model is an interesting one because it's very consistent in quality. That is not a positive thing to say only, because the fact is the band actually has very, very consistent style and quality throughout the years, but it also happened within a rather short amount of time. That is, I will show you here on Metal Archives, it makes it easier for me to explain it. So while the band started in 1994, it was 1997 when the band did their first album. And as you can see here on the Metal Archives site, Albums 1997, 98, 99, 2000s, and then only after that, those four after four, four first albums, there was a gap of two years. That's not very much, but still. So 2002 and 2004, and then it was quits. So uh, you can pretty much figure it out. This band was active as fuck, and uh, sometimes it's a blessing, sometimes it's a curse. And I'm not exactly sure which way it is with this band. Now, obviously, these guys have done other projects. So if you take a look here on the members list, you will see that uh, these band, band members have gone into different directions. For example, it's the bassist, King of Asgard, which is an active band these days. And then there are crime bands such as Retaliation, which is actually pretty good. Reviewed their material as well, as well as the King of Asgard. And other bands here listed. So while these band members probably probably that's Southern Nokia calling I'm not gonna pick it up so while the guys uh, you know went into different directions and different territories with the bands uh, after this one this one was I guess for their black flame burning moment uh, with the band so let's start going through so it started with 1997 and Pretty much Thai Primordial is all the way down, melodic Swedish black metal, and uh, nothing out of ordinary in that respect. They are not as dark as, maybe as intense as Dark Funeral, nor they are not exactly Marduk. But there is very, very Swedish things happening with Thai Primordial's music. And uh, some of these elements are actually not that good. I mean, the thing here is, it's much like more grooning in a way. It's very, very trademark like Swedish black metal. You have this up tempo, you have those kind of a classic, somewhat catchy melodies, and you have screaming vocals, and you have that kind of a thin sound, which was very prominent in the 90s, before budgets became bigger and studio technique and blah, blah, blah got better. 
and uh, when only the seasons mark the paths of time, what a kind of a confusing title, uh, it is. It was very basic back in the days. I mean, in hindsight, we're talking about in hindsight of this band, like 24, 26 years later, it's not exactly something, wow, outstanding and all that stuff. But if you put it into the context of time and figure out how this band must have been back in the days, I mean, if I had heard it back in the 1997 when it came out, uh, it, it was beyond the, the past of, you know, the golden era, you know, when, when things were really, really happening in the early years of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and so forth. I'm talking about roughly 1991 to 1995 or so, very short amount of time. So by 1997, I mean, a lot of bands had already did their, like, second or third, fourth album even. And uh, the point here is, going to the game in that era must have felt like this is very familiar, very easy to get into, but also not making waves. However, the music isn't bad in, in that relation. And I could only say this is pretty good of a start. And if only things have gone the right way, it would have been, you know, getting on the kind of incline and making better and better albums all the time. But in my opinion, Under is called Trollmone, which is, by the way, our only album which isn't available on Spotify when I was doing this listening process, it is actually a big step down. Not only the um, production is weaker, but also the songwriting is more like a um, step away from it. It's almost like this came out in a kind of a reversed uh, order. So in my opinion, it was like first album pretty good and then pretty basic mediocrity. Now, as the world of Uncharted and Wonder came out, like... Once again, one year later, um, I'm having notes here, so I don't speak out of my mind only. Uh, it is almost like the band stepped up a little bit, but not to the level of the first one. The thing here is, like I said, this the style is very, very consistent, so it's always melodic, always fast tempo, and always having those kind of a scream vocals, and always that kind of a thin sound. This is something that made me a kind of a even a somewhat annoying experience to listen through, because it seems like there's not much variety or change, not to mention evolution. Okay, once again, when the band came out with the fourth album, The Heresy of Age of Reason, it was again a step up. And then The Crowning Carnage, two years later, was a step down, to the very point where Pestilence Upon Mankind, the last album, The Swan Song, actually made a step up. Now, I've used these different kind of alphabets to describe how some bands, you know, evolve throughout their careers. Some are like letters A, use first go incline and then decline, going up and then down in quality. Some are letters like I, all the way up, or some are reverse I. Well, that may be a very, very rare thing to do. And then there are bands like going U or J, like starting well and going down and then up again. And then there are bands like Thy Primordial, which letter to use, I would say they are M, or N, or maybe W. Because the thing here is, they stop, start here, then they go down, to come up a little bit, then go down again, and go up again. So it's an interesting evolution. None of these albums are shite, none of them are great. Everything, in my opinion, uh, fit between decent and mediocrity. So at worst, they are doing the kind of a very, very forgettable, melodic, fast tempo, shriggy, black metal in the very, very classic 90s style. Very forgettable. Not A class, not B class, but more like C class. Not worse. Worst of the pile, but very, very forgettable. For example, this Unde is called Trollmone is exactly like that. I don't see any reason for me to get back to that anyway after this listening process. However, the better ones are actually something that if I could imagine playing something very weird like, hey, this more forgotten Swedish black metal names, I could go for that. Not likely, but I could. So my final order, the actual ranking for these albums would be roughly like this. Under is called Rolmone is the weakest one. It's the weakest production, maybe partially because I was listening to it on YouTube, so blame it on that. But that doesn't explain the kind of a weak songwriting. And by week, I mean very, very mediocre. Not bad, but say 6 out of 10, maybe even less. Um, then it would be more even fight. And this is why I'm taking a look at my notes 
to say if I had to pick this is sometimes hard because I find these albums very very having a very even battle I would say as the world of Uncharted and Wonder would be the second worst album it's clearly a step up from Under Is Call but it's not exactly among the best albums and that would be followed by the crowning carnage because that is also something like paling in comparison with the better albums once again it's very consistent in style and quality but if i had to really rank what i'm doing here yeah it would be the third worst album now since we have only six albums it's easy to call the three worst as the worst ones and the three better ones as the three best ones. So coming down to top three was a kind of a tough contest for me. It was for me hard to figure out which I would rank the best because there is no big difference really. So I would say the third best album is actually the debut where only the seasons mark the paths of time. Once again, I feel a little bit ridiculous to title, but that's just me. And why is that not the best one? Well, first of all, the band actually honed the stuff, but that was also the the album with the original ideas. And after that, nothing really changed that much. But there's a little bit of a difference why I'm saying The Heresy of Age of Reason is the second best album. And the reason is this. There might not be a big difference, but of course, better production, playing more tightly, and all that stuff makes the difference. There are actually a little bit more memorable parts on this album as well, which I guess justifies the second place. And the last one. Now, this is the irony of things. Pestilence Upon Mankind, the last album of the band, where it really seems to be grasping the idea of how to do melodic black metal the Swedish way nicely, was also the Swan song. So... I can only imagine how much better the band could have been if they kept going after this one. This one has clearly the best production. It's actually pretty goddamn good, even today's standards. And uh, I think everything here is more, you know, finding their place, more focused and all that stuff. Still, all this being said, this is not a big difference between that and the previous ones. But... Like said, if I had to pick the winner, if I had to pick the one album I would go back with Type Primordial, I would say it's this one. Now, I'm not going to miss the band, let's be honest about it, because like said, there are so many other bands coming from Sweden alone, which are, in my opinion, a lot better. doesn't matter whether you're talking about Dark Funeral, Murgering, or Marduk, or Arcanum, or goddamming Bathory, Kraft, etc., there are bands which are more interesting. Of course, none of those bands, well, most of those bands don't really compete with the style here. Mergrüning is probably the closest one, and even that is different, but in my opinion also a lot better. Not to mention Dawn. What a classic band with a classic album. Um, or albums. Anyway, that is not to say that you shouldn't be checking out Thry Primordial. For Much like for me, it is a good reminder what kind of underground names we actually had back in the days. And uh, I guess there is no reason why not to give a little bit of a go with this band. So if you start on with only one album, check out the latest one. And if you like that, maybe go back in the discography to check out the previous ones. And uh, maybe you will like it more than I do. It's not a bad band, but definitely not very good either. So all this brutality being said, it's time to say bye-bye and see you soon with next Worst to best slash a ranking video coming your way. Uh, it's going to be French black metal if things don't suddenly change too much. So let's see what it's all about. Meanwhile, go to listen to some good shit. This is Rauda and bye bye.